request. A major education conference is being held right here in Central Florida. News 13's Jackie Brockington is going in depth about why it's so important for teachers. The National Education Association, a labor union that represents millions of teachers, is having its national convention right here in Central Florida. And joining us to go in depth on this is Lily Eskelson Garcia, the president of the National Education Association. Thank you so much for taking Thank time out. Thank you for saying my name right, because my sixth graders, they, I went with Miss Lily because kids couldn't say Eskelson. Well, can I tell you a secret I practiced? <laughs> I wanted to get it right. <laughs> you know, the importance of being placed on testing as a measure of student and teacher progress is hotly contested that's that's a hot button it is and it, it is for me personally as a as an elementary teacher I taught at a homeless shelter for years so I know how kids have talents and gifts and skills that will never be recognized on a bubble test so we want our kids to have everything we want our kids to have more and when all you do is narrow teaching and learning to well that's all you need for that little bubble test you can memorize this we know that you're missing the great number of uh, talents and skills that they have. Mm -hmm. Some kids are very smart academically, but they don't test well. And so it really, uh, don't you think it really like brings them down their self-confidence when they know they're maybe an A or B student and they don't do well on the test? Exactly. And what we, we found a nice analogy. We said, you know, it's a measure. A, a standardized test is a measure, but we've made it the goal. And if a doctor just knew your temperature, it's important that he know your temperature. If you, if you have a fever, he has to go in there and find out what's going on. But if you end up saying, all I need is to have 98.6 and then I'll pretend like you're healthy, you'll miss an awful lot of important things. Mm -hmm. Now, as we said, the NEA represents millions of teachers and we've seen some battles uh, over teacher raises oh, right here in Central sure. Florida. You do a, teachers do an outstanding job, but they want more money. Well. We need so much for our students. And one of the things that any business would know is what you pay someone will determine whether or not they want to work with you. Um, what we're finding out now all throughout the country, fewer and fewer college students are saying, I'd like to be trained as a teacher. I'd like to be a teacher. What we know is that they have an interest in teaching. They have a heart for teaching. Mm -hmm. but. They look and they say, I'm going to have a lot of student debt. Am I going to even be able to repay my student debt if I'm making what a teacher makes? Maybe I should be an accountant. Maybe I should be um, a, a computer mm -hmm. technician or someone in business. We have to make sure that the profession of teaching um, is a rewarding profession. So the next question has to be then, how do school districts and the teachers union strike a balance between paying teachers what they deserve and still being able to fund other things? Right, and you're, you use the right word. It is a balance. It's, it is absolutely finding that balance. Um, when budgets shrink, then the balance is out of whack. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I taught for 20 years in Utah, where our state motto continues to be, stack them deep, teach them cheap. Uh, and I had 39 <laughs> kids in my class because wow. that's how they balanced it. They said, all right, you have a modest, you have modest pay, you have, uh, you know, uh, you need to buy the books and everything. So we'll make up the difference by hiring less teachers than mm -hmm. we need. And I ended up with 39 kids. And that wasn't good for those kids to be in an overcrowded classroom. Because somebody gets missed along the way. So do you think there should be any changes to how teachers are screened before they're hired? You know, I am looking at many, many innovative ideas on college campuses all throughout the country saying how do we recruit people who never even thought about being a teacher but they have talents for that. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking at ways of, for instance, loan uh, forgiveness. If mm -hmm. you want to be a teacher, but we won't just take anyone. Mm -hmm. You have to be academically talented. You have to be someone with uh, good personal skills. We're looking for that broad-based, well-rounded professional that a student will say, I understand, I like your class, this is fun. We want people who can bring the joy of learning back know, into that classroom. You know, I know growing up everybody has a favorite teacher, someone they can remember that really made a difference in their lives. So let's talk about the convention of, uh, very quickly. What can teachers expect from this event? You know, we will have uh, over 7,000 delegates here. These are educators from all around the country uh, who belong to the National Education Association. 
our state affiliate here, the Florida Education Association. They will come in one, it's like a basketball arena, <laughs> uh, full of teachers and support professionals, college professors, retired teachers, student teachers, all saying, I want my colleagues to listen to my ideas, and I want to listen to my colleagues. And so they have the right, they are delegates, they are elected from the schools that okay. they taught at, uh, that they work in, and they say, here's my idea for helping kids. It'll be hotly debated, everything they put on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's like our own Congress. Sure. Someone will say I, someone will say Yay. no, mm -hmm. and the National Education Association okay. will listen to our representative assembly and go forth. Well, we really appreciate our teachers and the job that they do, so thank you very much. Lily Eskelson, Eskelson Garcia, the National President, thank you so much. Thank you. Our county-by-county -county coverage continues now in seminar.